Hi, I'm Tay Kang of Harbor Freight Tools for Schools, and I'm excited to talk to you today about building communities through the skilled trades. Excellent skilled trades education has the power to change lives inside and outside the classroom. And over the past five years of operating the Harbor Freight Tools for Schools Prize for Teaching Excellence, we have been impressed by the teachers and students that take what they've learned inside the classroom and applied it to improving their local communities. And thus, I'm honored to introduce one of those prize-winning teachers who will share with you all some of his best ideas and practices. Let's get started. Meet Justin Pickard, an agricultural mechanics teacher from Paso Robles High School. Justin was a 2018 Harbor Freight Tools for Schools Prize for Teaching Excellence winner. We are thrilled to have Justin share his insights and experiences with us. Justin, thank you so much for being here today. Your Ag Mechanics program does some outstanding work. How would you describe the community of Paso Robles? Paso Robles is a uh, small rural community, and I'd have to say if I were to characterize one of the best attributes about it is that our community loves its public education. Uh, specifically, it loves supporting its students, whether that comes from athletes to Skills USA to FFA, to our drama or dance performances. Uh, this is a community that loves its students. On a bigger picture, how do you define community? Community for me, and especially when it comes to uh, the program that I've defined here, is uh, it, it's a critical portion of education. In agriculture, we in California, we have what we call the three ring model which utilizes equal parts of student engagement in the classroom, their participation in leadership opportunities, and their advised or guided projects. When you take a look at what community does for education, you kind of look at that same three ring model approach where you have the student and the family, you have the educators, and you have the community tied all in one. How does your Ag Mechanics program fit within the local Paso Robles community? We have a relationship that is a two-way street of communication where we draw people from the community in, whether that be through their time and service or donations, and then we put our students back out into the com community through service projects or employment. Can you tell us about some of the best community projects you've worked on? I would have to say that our recent community service outreach projects are some of the ones that are really sticking in my mind because it was a perfect example of not just giving back to the community, but tying community members together uh, at the initial phase to help really jumpstart this entire process. And those were our Paso Strong Yard Steak signs, as well as our Santa Maria barbecues that we built for um, fundraisers. Both of those were to support the San Luis Obispo County Food Bank. So the Paso Strong project started during distance learning for us when we were not on campus uh, with education. We had a small window of opportunity where we could bring small groups of cohorts to campus. And what I did is I had my students here four days a week. They did their distance learning from my classroom to their other classes, and then we got to weld in the afternoon. So that project really blossomed from those students who were in that program, uh, wanting to give back to the community in some way, some fashion, because we had the opportunity to devote some time to that. What we did is we created some signs the, with a heart and the hashtag Paso Strong. That material was donated from a local steel company. The powder coating services were donated for free as well by our local company. And we actually had a local agriculture business that was the sales point for those signs. So as we transitioned from distance learning into the hybrid model, we developed a plan to build 16 Santa Maria barbecues. Santa Maria barbecues are uh, open barbecues where the grill lifts up and down. Um, a lot of the time when you see that kind of open top uh, raising grill style, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about with a Santa Maria style barbecue. We needed to do something that was small and portable. I wanted to make our, uh, give our students the opportunity to learn the hands-on skills that we had been talking about during distance learning, but in a very controlled, efficient environment. So we came up with developing 16 Santa Maria barbecues to help guide them through the process of fabrication. 
we partnered with the James W. Brabeck Youth Legacy Fund, which is a local organization in our community that supports young agriculturists. And we sold 15 of those barbecues at the California Mid-State Fair Industrial Education Project Auction, raising over $35,000. Those funds went directly to the James W. Brabeck Youth Legacy Fund, and they used those funds to purchase livestock projects at the Junior Livestock Auction. After they purchased the livestock projects, they took and paid for the processing of the protein and donated that to the San Luis Obispo County Food Bank. The students loved this project because it was developing a product that they looked and compared to local competitors and they wanted, they had this desire to just kind of make this their own, uh, brand it with their own name. So when you take a look at some of the features that we were able to put on it, uh, keeping it lightweight and portable, folding legs, uh, stainless steel components, that was all student driven because of their passion for this project. They knew that they had a goal that they needed to make it comparable in price because of a profit margin consideration. But once we were able to work through details, what they wanted to see on the barbecue, came to fruition most of the time, and I think that buy-in to the project just led to the biggest amount of excitement for them. Can you talk about the Mobile Welding Lab and its impact on your community? The Mobile Welding Lab started off as a makeshift trailer where we just added equipment and supplies and took it to the various areas of Paso Robles for our outreach opportunities. From the success that was actually started with that uh, equipment, we developed and designed a, an enclosed trailer that utilizes engine drive and portable wire feed welding equipment. And our next phase of implementation is actually looking at teaching children in our area hands-on fabrication techniques so that they can have take-home projects and not even come to Paso Robles High School's facility. That success really is starting to transition more opportunities for students from a variety of backgrounds as they see some of the stereotypes that might be associated with a hands-on program like welding and breaking those barriers down to access their ability to be successful in this program. The biggest success factor for the Mobile Welding Lab is utilizing my high school students as the instructors. I, as the instructor of Paso Robles High School, I'm the facilitator whenever we take that mobile welding lab out. I'm not the one who's one-on-one -on -one teaching the younger students from our community. That's kind of that bridge of taking your skill set as an advanced member of my welding program and being able to translate that back into how well you can teach and train somebody else. Those students that come from the middle schools, that come from the elementary schools, having that direct connection and relationship with a high school student from Paso Robles, I think that is probably the biggest benefit because they're building relationships, not just skills. Why do you think having your students address a local community need is a component of teaching excellence in the skill trades? We have to focus on taking students essentially from a point of no knowledge to a high level of knowledge but we also have to prepare them to be productive citizens in the community. So the technical skill is definitely a growth point in career technical education, but we also have the responsibility and the duty to make sure that they can take those skills and apply them to the real world. By having a community service project or community-based projects inside the classroom that directly impacts our local area, it's not only preparing them to take that next step to be productive citizens in the real world, they are already jumping off from that point. What role do students play in designing and implementing the projects? Here at Paso Robles High School, they're my partners with this. I like to think of it as a, a think tank, as kind of a sounding board, especially during that Paso Strong time period where we had an opportunity to be a smaller condensed group and really brainstorm these ideas. So it was a lot of feedback from one another until we achieved that kind of idea or that goal that we wanted to pursue. What are the three most important things to remember when starting a community project? The first one is a focused purpose. You have to have a goal or purpose that you're going to be striving for because if you are, are coming at it without that direct uh, approach to any type of service, and it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, raising funds for somebody, but without that guided focus, the students aren't going to have obtainable goals. Your community isn't going to have 
the direction to participate in the buy-in. So I'd have to say step one is to have that very guided, focused goal. Step two actually kind of goes in conjunction with that, is making sure that you are talking with your community people because the input of community support for a community service project is probably just as valuable as the output of the community support. When I take a look, especially at that Santa Maria barbecue and the Paso Strong signs, it wasn't just about us giving back to our community, it was bringing community leaders into the project on the onset so that they were a part of the process from start to finish as well. And I'd have to say that step three is then taking a look at what's your output gonna be. Is it gonna be financial? Is it gonna be project-based? Is it gonna be time or service-based? You have to look at what your output's gonna be so that you can identify the ways and the method methods that you're gonna deliver that opportunity to the community. What are three tips you would give teachers and students in promoting and marketing their work? First and foremost, communication. This kind of goes back to the old salesman approach where you gotta hit the ground running. And that's very true. You have to talk to people in the community, but you need to be guided and focused in how you use your time because as an educator, time is valuable. So talking to businesses, talking to service organizations, talking to booster organizations, or probably one of the easiest ways is to get involved with your local school board so that information is going out to your community in a very clear and concise pattern. Second way is social media. I think with a social media presence, you are able to reach a large population of people fairly rapidly, especially when we take a look at projects like the Paso Strong, uh, the barbecue project, or even just when students are selling their projects for our local fair here, we have a direct tie that can share that message far beyond the reaches of Paso Robles. And then the last one, number three, is really what's your big promotion going to be for whatever it is that you're trying to perform. Those should be your normal bread and butter kind of operations. You should always be communicating to those organizations. You should always be using your social media. But sometimes that becomes white noise to a general population when you're putting information out. So what's gonna be your big eye catchy? Is that a video package? Is that a banner along the highway? Is that utilizing your message board, your, key, uh, your kiosk on the, the front of the school? What's your big advertisement that's going to catch people's eye and redirect their attention back to your program? How do you build bridges within diverse communities? We've actually partnered with Oak Park Community Center in the past with their Youth Works program, which teaches them real world hands-on skills and job uh, shadowing and, and job safety and job skills. And we've taken mobile welding labs to their facility and taught young people how to weld as young as third grade. So they're getting a, a, a direct connection to what we're doing here at the program, but we sought them out. So you have to be the bridge that kind of uh, goes out and, and reaches to those students. We've also taken our mobile welding lab to our middle schools. Uh, a lot of the time, promotion for your program only happens for the eighth grade students, but reaching out to, for us, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for our middle schools is a critical tool because it shows that students from any background have the opportunity to be successful in a program that might have some stereotype um, walls that would prevent certain populations from wanting to participate. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. If folks want to learn and see more about your program, where should they go? If they want to go to Facebook, they can take a look at our page, Paso Robles High School Welding Technology. We try our best to keep people up to date on what we're doing in the classroom and the shop, as well as project development, uh, times that we're going out into the community for our outreach and service, as well as those projects that will be for sale at the California Mid-State Fair. Any final words of wisdom? When it comes to community outreach, community service, there's really no wrong way to do it. As long as you're engaging the people who are directly in your community um, through the input process, you're engaging them in the output process, and your students are benefiting in between, uh, th there's a lot of different ways that you can go about making sure that you're bettering the community from the skills that you're teaching your students. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to Justin for sharing his insights. And I just want to wish you and your communities the best of luck.